Hey everybody, I am back, and today I am actually not playing a specific deck. I'm just here to talk about my tournament reports. For those of you who don't know, which I'm not sure how many of that will be, I'm not sure how many of you actually watch my videos if I don't directly link you to them, but the British Columbia Provincial Championships was yesterday, of which I came second place in the senior division with Mega Mewtwo EX Bronzong, so that was awesome. Now I'm just playing a fun game with Rizzi and Genesect, so I have something to do while I talk. So anyways, I get there in the morning, and well, there's this, the insurance company had an issue, so everyone under age 15 had to have a parent or a guardian, which was strange. Not sure if this happens to anyone else or if it's just BC. Just strange. But anyway, we get there, and we get, after entering, we get a dice and a reverse valley. I decide to switch the uh, reverse, reverse valley with the one I played in my deck. Although in the end, it was kind of useless, so I would have taken it, so I took it up for a parallel city today after the tournament. Anyways, on to the matches. Round one was versus somebody whose name I have forgotten. I only got one person's name over the course of the day, or I only got permission to use one person's name over the course of the day, which was kind of dumb of me. So I will only be using that one person's name. But he was playing what looked like somebody had taken a whole bunch of cards out of their binder and put them into a deck. So, yeah, there was stuff like Toxicroak EX, Evil Tal EX, Dragonite EX, Emolga EX. I think there was one more on free. Oh yeah, there was also Lapras and Furfru from XY. So it was just kind of a mess. Game 1 and Game 2 were fairly similar. I got a turn 1 Bronzer Floatstone and a turn 2 Mega Mewtwo to knock things out. I believe he took two prizes over the course of the games. So yeah, the games were both fairly quick, both fairly similar. We pondered the use of Battle Compressor for a bit, but even as a one-off I found it was really good. And then after that, I won two games in a row, and I moved on to 1-0. Round 2 was versus Josh, who was playing Greninja. Now for those of you who don't know, Josh is the best, I believe he's ranked as number one player in BC. So this is certainly going to be interesting. Game 1, I again hit turn 1 Bronzer Floatstone and turn 2 Mega. I did hit turn 1 Bronzer Floatstone a lot. I think there was only two games before top 8, I missed it. So yeah, Bronzer Floatstone, turn 2 I mega and I hit 130 on turn 3 to knock out his Greninja. After that I just took prizes really quickly, and he scooped, I believe. My memory is not perfect, so sorry. Game 2 was unfortunately not as exciting for me. Whenever I set, he managed to get out Greninja Break more than once. And a 170 HP 1 prize Pokemon is really annoying to knock out. Even if it is a stage 3, there is Frogadier to speed it up. So yeah, I pretty much got steamrolled. He knocked out Bronzongs with Giant Shuriken, or Bronzongs and Bronzers with Giant Shuriken over and over. To take easy prizes while well, he built up a knockout on my YouTube. And then game 3 was again really close. I managed to get turn 2 Mega and start knocking things out. And then he would he knocked out my Mega, so I sent up another one, and I had taken five prizes at that point, and he knocked it out. By then I was out of things to do, and we were both running out of cards in our deck. So I lis tried Lysandering up an Octillery, but he managed to retreat it. I did that again, and going back into his turn, he had exactly no he had exactly zero cards left in his deck. But he managed to retreat the Octillery with a float stone, and I lost. So yeah, one one. Round 3 was versus someone playing Evil Tom Mega Manectric. Now, if Greninja was annoying, Manec Mega Manectric is about as annoying because even though it gives up 2 prizes and it has an extra energy attached, it also has 40 extra hit points. So I really do need the same amount of energy. That, and I can't just rely on him not having attackers after a while. Because he constantly gets energy back. 
Game one, I get a fairly decent start, but he knocks me out over and over with Turbo Bolt, and I end up losing. Game two, I just, I, game two, we both get set up, but I managed to overpower him with several Mega Evolutions. Oh, I didn't mean to put first. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. And then game three, I think he dead drew for most of the game. And I think he ended up scooping, but I can't really remember. Game. And then, just like that, I'm 2-1. Round 4 was versus someone playing Mega Manectric Ho-Oh EX, the new Ho-Oh. So, game 1 was pretty much the epitome of Big EX battle. We both attacked with exclusively our Mega Evolutions over the course of the game. And, yeah. I believe he got off one attack with Ho-Oh. But most of the time when we were attacked, we were able to two-shot things, but since I got the first attack, I ended up winning the exchange. Near the end, I started knocking stuff out in one hit instead of two, and I won the game. Game two was pretty much the opposite. He got the first hit, and I was only two-shotting. So, by the end, he had taken all of his prizes before I could draw my last ones. Game three, once again, he doesn't draw much while I get a fantastic start. I believe I got turn two Mega, and once he's down four prizes, he sends up Holo since it has no energy on it. But I attach double and knock that out, so I won. And I am on to three and one. Now, after asking some friend, some friends, because I'm not very good with calculations, I, it was a pretty decent chance of if I manage if I ID round five, then oh, I'm facing Archie. It's cool. If I ID round five, I could make it into cut. So I would have faced Greninja, but I ID with him. He agreed to it. He was very nice. He also made top cut. And then, so we ID'd and then we played a match for fun where I set up a huge mega and knocked out his Greninja break and he couldn't really come back. So after the standings go up, I there was one player that was 4-1-0 because he had to play his last round. There are two, two players that were 3-0-2. Or no. Yeah, two, three players that were 302, and five players, I believe, that were 311. So one of us wouldn't make cut, but I managed to squeak in at eighth place and take Mega Mewtwo into top eight. Unfortunately, I ended up facing a rather abysmal matchup in top eight in Night March. So let's get right into that. Game one, I decided to rely on Iga Slash and Jirachi. So. What I did was, I actually discarded most of my Mewtwo pieces, because I knew I wasn't going to use them. I used Aegislash when... Yeah, for the most part I used Aegislash, and he, when he hit a Hex Maniac, he couldn't knock me out. So I retreated into Jirachi and used that whenever I needed to attach more energy to Aegislash. And he ran out of attackers after a while, including me using Sky Return to avoid having to deal with Bursting Balloon. It didn't seem like over the course of two games he ran any way to get Night Marchers back outside of Puzzle of Time. So because he ran out of those, he lost. Game 2 was more the same, except I started with Mega Slash. I did get set up, and around turn 3 he life centered out Jirachi and knocked that out, so I used Egg and he flipped town map and revealed two Hex Maniacs, so he pulled one out of his prizes. And then I judged and took the Hex Maniac away for most of the game. So I used Aegislash to sweep through most... Yeah, oh my god, I'm bad at talking, I'm sorry. I used Aegislash to sweep through most of that game. There was a point where I decided it would have been better just to actually use Hammer in off Bronzong. And for as crazy as it ended up being, it worked, so... <laughs> He couldn't knock out Bronzong anyways, but I didn't feel like taking a risk, so Hammer In actually got me two prizes and it was cool. Both games he played Puzzle of Time very early on, which reduced the amount of doubles and Night Marchers I had to deal with. So I'm not actually sure what was going on there. And last but not least, or not, I mean not last but not least, I'm into top two, silly. 
Well, the top four was versus someone playing Seismitoad EX, Trevenant EX, Zoroark. Which, despite being extremely strange, it apparently worked really well to get in the top four. In between rounds, I realized that I could just I could actually use Parallel Slitty and drop myself to three bench to reduce the amount of damage all of his attackers could do. And I only did that once over the course of the two games, but it did manage to work. Game one, I ended up sacrificing two Mewtwo EXs to set up a third one, but I got the Mega out and took four prizes with it. Or not four prizes, I think I took all six of my prizes with it. I got, so yeah, game two was a bit more technical. He had a lot of energy disruption cards and I had to discard some crucial stuff early on, but I did manage to set up double Bronzong, I think. I did manage to set up Bronzong in some degree and take him out slowly while building up other attackers. After a while, he, we realized that, well, he realized that he wanted to try and deck me out because I had run out of attackers and was just using Shaming X's Sky Return to hit for 30 over and over again. Not the best strategy, but <laughs> could be a lot worse, so... I mean, it, I could be losing, so who am I to complain? Anyways, after that, he played Red Card to try and take the DCE out of my hand. But by doing so, he actually ran himself out. He actually put more cards in my deck than his, and after a while, I I let him knock out a Bronzer and a Jirachi to try and not run the risk of Shaman being knocked out, and my opponent surrenders. So, yeah, afterwards, when it came down to just Aegislash, he versus Seeker judged, so he'd run out of cards to get back a Hex Maniac, and he couldn't two-shot me anyways. So... I actually managed to win when we went to count cards because he had six cards left in his deck, I had seven. So that was extremely go close, good game, and I cannot wait. Well, man, I could not wait to get to top two, which was, it wasn't really in my favor though because I, I was either going to play Josh who I had already lost to throughout the day, though it was extremely close. Or another Night March matchup, which isn't unlosable, it's not as bad as, say, a Trevenant matchup, but it also isn't great. <laughs> I ended up playing Josh, though, and it went down in a game kind of similar to our first series, except the third game was not quite as close. Game 1, once again, I start Mewtwo, or I start with a turn 2 Mega, and begin attacking. So, yeah, by the time, yeah. eventually, he Lysandered up Mega, and I didn't have enough energy on it. We were running out of cards, so I Lysandered up Octillery, and it stuck until I got the energy to retreat and knock out his Octillery with my Aegislash. Game 2 went down to our game, similarly to our Game 2 in our first match of the day, which was, it was kind of close, but... Only in the end, he just ended up rolling me. And then in game three, I dead drew. I had to sky return loop a few times. But by then, he managed to start using shadow stitching and silent lab, and I scooped. So, game three was a bit anticlimactic, but all in all, I was very proud of my performance. I had a great time. And yeah, it was exciting. That was that's my highest placing in an event ever, so... Yeah, will me. So now I guess I'll give some of my thoughts on the deck as I miss playing not Grab Shaman. I think the deck is actually good. Like, I think it was quite good of a play since nobody expected it, nobody tested the Mewtwo matchup. And although Trevenant is a horrible loss and Night March isn't that much better, I didn't hit a single Trevenant throughout the day and I only hit one Night March. So things certainly went my way. I'm glad I wasn't that one person, that one 3 one who got ninth. Because that would have been kind of upsetting 
because if I had won, I would have been in cut for sure. Maybe in a higher seed, but then I might have had to face, I don't know, Garbodor or something. I think there was a Garbodor deck. Vespiplume was in top 8. I certainly didn't want to face Vespiplume. Vespiplume, the matchup pretty comes down, pretty much comes down to if I win the opening coin toss and get a turn of items, then I pretty much win. Since I win turn 1, I get a turn of items and get, allow myself time to get set up. And then game two, he obviously does not give me that time to get set up. And then game three, I have that option to get set up, so I... I don't know, Vespiplume's a really strange matchup. Yeah, but I'm proud of my performance. I don't think... The only area where I think I might have been able to improve on is not dead drawing game three of the finals. I might have been Provincial Champion, but 90 points plus two booster boxes. Both of which I do plan to open on camera. It's certainly fun. And, yeah, I do one, possibly two regional steel chiefs, so I can get my invite this year. Which is going to be super cool. Last year in seniors, I think. And yeah, now I guess I'll just actually go back to commentating on this match, since this is the deck I was using. So yeah, I misplayed by not grabbing a shaman, so now I am in complete top deck mode. I did top deck a versus seeker so I could Lysander, but I have to move. I have to a move my own shaman, and b get have something to do. So if I top deck a DCE, then I can sky return and set up Heatran, and I'm pretty good to go. I don't need to infinite sky return loop again. I did that enough times yesterday. <laughs> So, why did my opponent put a spirit on front of spirit? I don't know, I top deck versus seeker, so just draw pass. Yeah, I felt like the deck was really consistent, and the only change I'd consider making are switching out my Shattershot Mewtwo's to any Photon Wave Mewtwo's I might get in the future. Because even though Photon Wave isn't a great attack, you can't use Shattershot at all, so... It's kinda worth it, I guess. Sort of. Not really. And my opponent gets it easy, so I'm gonna have to bring something else up. Yeah, it's. Oh, and it can also dump Joltik if you can remove their Fighting Fury belts, which is fun. And yeah, the other change I did make was switching out Reverse Valley for Parallel City, since Reverse Valley was kind of useless out all day outside of removing my opponent's stadium, which is something I could have accomplished with Parallel City and also drop their bench. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it certainly did w did well, and I don't think anyone was expecting it to go that deep. So yeah, I hmm. guess all right. Poisonous death net means the shaman is going down this turn, so going to need AZ to try and nope, that's a lesson. All right, get up here, shaman. Thankfully I didn't do this at the tournament until game 3. Although this this dead draw is partially my fault, or completely my fault, since I didn't I got Mewtwo instead of Shaman thinking, oh hey, I can do stuff, but no, I can't do stuff. Since next up on my agenda is regionals, we will be going right back to expanded content, which is great because everyone was expanded, I think. Or at least I do. I hate standard, to be honest. It's really dull. Considering Night March is like 40% of the decks that you should, you'll you most likely face, and Trevon and Evil Tall account for another 30%. So it's kind of a bland format. But it's certainly not, you know, super uninteresting. I mean, I had a good solid 14 hours of it yesterday, which is more standard than I've ever played in a row. Or actually, at all before, since, you know, my all of my cities were expanded, regionals is expanded this year. Everything's expanded. And now Heatran's going to go down, too. So this is a really terrible demonstration of how my deck works. Anyways, I also... It's a metal. I can attach the metal. I can... Lysander Sceptile, I can pass the turn. 
If I just get a DCE, that would be great. Admittedly, Mega Sceptile is kind of in the same boat as Mega Manectric, where it's really impossible to knock out in one hit. But it has free healing with its attack, which is actually really bad for Mega Mewtwo. Unless, you know, you load up your everything onto one Mega Mewtwo and go from there. Okay, they've got a Spirit Link, which means no Floatstone shenanigans. Alright, so... Alright, they can Agility. And prevent me from damaging them next turn if they flip heads. But it does give me an extra turn to dra- Blah, bleh. Oh wait, no, they can just retreat and kill me, never mind. <sighs> I need a Sycamore, a Birch, or even a Judge. A Judge would be cards at least. Yeah. Also, I guess to start a comment debate if anyone feels like commenting. What do you prefer? Professor Birch's observations or Shauna? I pref I honestly prefer Birch over Shauna because A, it has the chance of drawing more cards, even though it can draw less cards if you flip Tails. And B, Judge draws one less card in Shauna, but it comes at... The, basically, you're exchanging a card for opponent disruption. Hey, Judge, I was just talking about you. Alright, Reverse Valley, my... Alright, now let's go grab that Shaman. That was silly of me. Set up. Oh, and I even hit an energy too. Perfect. And I'll bench Aegislash, Bronzong, Metal Links. And Psychic Infinity. I nearly passed the turn again. <laughs> that would have been quite silly if I passed the turn. So yeah, Mega Sceptile does not do that much damage, even though I am a less center away from losing this game. So, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes. Also, I just really love this full art. Not sure why, I know it's Spike Band graphics, but all Megas are, I think. It's just great. So, they get another Mega down. I know I'm- is this Spike Band graphics? Yes. I'm terrible for starting a sentence and you know for finishing it. However, I'm not in danger of being attacked by the other Mega Sceptile since it needs two energy to attack and Max Elixir does not work on Mega Sceptile because it's a Mega, not a basic. So yeah, now I've got an okay setup, it's still a bit shaky. The other problem is two of my bronze are surprised. So I'm pretty much left to one bronze on for most of this game. And now here's one of those occasions where I can play Parallel City and let my own bench drop to 3 to reduce the amount of damage they do to 80. Or, you know, like, I'm not sure if they decide to go the route of I'm going to use... What's it called? Unseen Claw? Yeah, Unseen Claw. It for 130 minus 20 is 110, so... Probably better just to lock their own bench down. And there goes my Reverse Valley. It's not a great card, I decided to try it out because it could increase the longevity of my Aegislash and the like, but I would not recommend playing it in this deck, simply because unless you're out of Mewtwo's or facing Night March, you, or you know, there's Heat Trim, you should really be using only Mega Mewtwo, and Aegislash and Heat Trim are purely backup. And also never play it down against Evil Tall, that is just a no. That's a strict no. There, let's parallel see their bench. They're probably going to get rid of the Shaman. Alright, I'm going to Metal Links. Going for a more risky play because I don't need me to be knocked out. So I'm going to retreat into Aegislash. Max Potion the Mega Sycamore. It pays off as I hit an energy. I can also Startling Megaphone, discard their Spirit Links, just because. Trainer's Mail, let's get Battle Compressor and play it. Alright, what don't I need? Don't really need Birch, so I'll just discard it. And Slash Blast for Knockout. After this, I will have to have a repeat. 
and pretty much just shuffle back and forth between these two attackers. Or, you know, versus Secret Lysander and try and knock out Shamans over and over. That would work. Yeah, I can versus Seeker Lysander. I think I actually need to AZ this turn. And then save it specifically for when I will need those AZs. As opposed to Lysander and around stuff. I do have to Metalink, so the Mega has to take a hit. Which is kind of a bummer. I mean, hmm, this, is, this is awkward. <laughs> the Mega has to take a hit, so... Not sure really what to do. I mean, I think I lose regardless since I'm running out of things to attack with. The Mega has to take a hit, but since I don't have bronze on, two Bronze on, Aegislash can't attack next turn. So I might need to try and find another Ultra Ball to get my Mega. I'll need to hit Spirit Link Mega next turn. Oh, they didn't- oh, they must have attached that turn, okay. That works phenomenally for me, actually. It's attached, Metal Links. And Slash Blast. So now I've done the 100. Ideally, I would like to hit Metal Links and, or not Metal Links, Spirit Link and Mega before, so I have another thing to work with. And next turn I will, 140, next turn Aegislash EX or Aegislash will take the hit with 10 HP left. Going back into my turn so I can AZ pick it up and start attaching to it with Metal Links again. Seeker, what are they going for? AZ, they're going to pick up the Mega. Still think I should probably retreat this turn. Or if they're going to Agility, then... Are, are they going to Agility or Mega Evolve? They don't get the Spirit Link back, so... Hmm. This is pretty fun, actually. I like this kind of game. Yeah, if they do attack with something like Strong Slash, then I am going to definitely play the AZ. I might play it anyways. Oh, there's Spirit Link. Alright, 30, 60, 91, 21, 50. Alright, I can score a knockout with the Mega if I go all in. Now I will AZ pick up Aegislash. Did they flip? I should have checked if they flipped heads or not. They flipped tails! This is perfect! So I can Psychic Infinity Knockout, and hey Bronzer, you're here even if you're a bit late to the party. So yeah, there really isn't much my opponent can do since I have Versus Seeker Lysander for Shaman. And they can Sleep Poison, try and stall, and then I would have- if I top deck Mega, then Sleep Poison is kind of redundant since I can just Mega Evolve Versus Seeker AZ and go back in it. Or I guess I'll attach energy, that works too. If they flip tails off of sleep poison or I flip heads to wake up, then I win. I've got the attachment from hand to knock out Sceptile. Or versus Seeker, Ly versus Seeker Lysander if they make it. Yep, they flip heads to put me to sleep. I flip heads to wake up, so Psychic Infinity. Good game. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time with another video in the expanded format, because that's my main focus again. And yeah, hope you enjoyed my tournament report and little game. And see you all next see you all around. Bye.